five minute fix time, guys and girls. Thanks for watching and thank you so much for the comments on these videos. We've got loads more coming. We're gonna talk about trying to hit the ball further today with a simple, simple idea that I use when I make my practice swings and in my practice, which you should start using. I do it with my students and we're seeing real benefits. So hitting the ball as far as I can while retaining my same level of accuracy. So in effect, using the technique that you're using now, but applying a little bit more speed, try and make sure that we're sending it as far as we should is something that more of us could like really apply to because squeezing a bit more distance out is only going to benefit you and your score. Now if I want to go my fastest what I'm not going to do yet we see loads of amateurs doing it is setting myself to this ball and then just freezing up for 30 seconds 10 seconds 20 seconds and having no movement kind of locking myself in a state of panic and then trying to get the momentum of the club going from a completely static position where I'm just oh, locked and then, uh, oh, here we go, I'm off. Like, it's a shock to the system almost when you move. But the trouble is because people are so dialed into precision ideas, which I totally get, you all have too many penalty shots if you're not a low enough handicap. You all hit the ball in the trees too often. We know that, so precision is still a key point. But what I'm finding with my students is their levels of precision stay the same. For some it improves, I haven't seen one deteriorate using this simple idea, but what we do see consistently with lots of students, like a high percentage of them, is they start adding a bit more club head speed, which then over time is gonna equate to lower scores. So if we break down some basics of me starting my backswing, and it's the same for world-class players show this pattern, good players show this pattern, and I want you to start reflecting these kind of patterns. What I actually do is I start, believe it or not, with 100% of my pressure on my lead foot, because the only way I can start my backswing is to try and get all my pressures almost 70, 80% onto trail foot at the stage of around here in my backswing. Yep, you heard me right. I'm moving my pressure almost 80% onto my trail foot in the first early stages of my swing before I then start recentering and headering back towards the target. And to do that, to get my pressures over there, I have to put them into here to then push off to move them over here. I don't start 50-50 or 60-40 like lots of people say they do. They just don't do that. It's, 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 it, it makes them more kind of stuck and static. If I start 60-40 in here to push this way, it's really hard. I actually want to start pushing, and you see this with loads of golfers, where if they're a lot more pressure in this foot as they start, they start going that way to start the backswing. And then they're over here at the top. This is so common, my daughter used to do this. She'd get set back here. So she then pushes off this foot, which sends her this way as the club goes back. And then she realizes she can't hit it from there. And this is common with so many golfers, then they just kind of move over here and stay in turn. Whoa, big slices. So we need the pressure going this way early at the beginning. Lots of amateur golfers are simply not doing that, but this is how you do it. And sometimes it's the simplicity of these ideas that just help so much. So what I want you to do is start pressure on foot, lead foot, club out in front of you. And I want you to even rock to your lead foot to then start your backswing and then bang through. So basically my practice swings, you'll see me do it loads, is up here and through. So I'm basically preloading lead and club ahead to try and get the momentum of my body turn, of my speed into my action. And even though I don't do that when I hit the ball, I do, you can see it when I hit the ball in the fact that you can see me shuffling backwards and forwards and my first initial movement is to go this way to then go that way. You'll see it even before I start the swing, I load lead foot up to then trail foot it to then try and get back the lead foot. And this is maximizing my speed. The difference, between static setup to one where I am forwards to going back. And even though I can't do that when I hit the ball, you can in practice, I'm doing it more this way, leading to then push back, is up to four miles an hour. Four miles an hour. That's like 10, 15 yards of extra distance if the strike's in place. That's massive. It's an eight iron instead of a seven iron into that green. You can hit shots like this on the range and I get some of my fastest ones. You just gotta be careful that you don't hit the ball. So you start forwards and pull back to try and get speed. So my strike wasn't there, but my club head speed's gone up to 113, where the one before that was 112. It'll just keep going up. Like it's ridiculous, 114. It's so crucial, so many golfers get 
paralyzed at the beginning. Let's get looser, let's get the club going forwards and going back and hitting some shots. You are gonna be amazed how far you hit it. And hitting it far definitely helps. And that's gonna come from centerness of strikes and better turns. And if you wanna learn how you shouldn't be turning your shoulders for more distance, yet shouldn't be, this one's helping loads of golfers.